be great. Welcome to Life Science Success Podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Don Davis, and I am a consultant in life sciences, and I also am the founder of D3 Digital Media. We employ decades of life science experience and innovative technology to develop and define digital marketing strategies for healthcare companies. Some of the things that we work on are things like websites, SEO for companies in life sciences, social media, and then we also do live events. I keep telling people, if you focus much more on live events versus these these webinars, I call it almost like the non-webinar webinar, um, would primarily be the focus of the things that we're trying to hold, hold and host with many of our life sciences partners. So with that, I wanted to uh, just quickly bring in my guest here. So Christopher Musar. Christopher graduated from the University of Georgia with a PhD in molecular genetics, where he focused on epigenetics and evolution. He sim simultaneously obtained his MD MBA from the Terry College of Business. He's currently the managing director and COO of Vector Builder Incorporated. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Don. Yeah, thanks a lot for being here. So uh, would you mind just telling the listeners a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, well for, how many languages is this broadcast? Is just one? <laughs> just <Like>. one. <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> thankfully, because I, I, I trip up enough on English, let alone if I, if I spoke other languages. I could only imagine how many things I could butcher. <laughs> yeah, I say I, I, I speak probably about 1.7 if you count them all together with the little bits, <laughs> but, uh, I, but, but our team probably is, uh, on average over two, I would say, and some speak as much as like seven or eight. So, but, but yeah, a little bit about myself, um, is I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and go white Sox, um, and, uh, relocated to Wilmington, Delaware, um, you know, to go to high school. And for those of you who know Wilmington, Delaware, it's because my dad worked for DuPont. Yes. And uh, so went out there and then um, I really kind of want to focus on my research uh, journey to, to kind of give my background because it was quite unique, like given the timing of when I started university, uh, you know, over 20 years ago in the age of the Internet and, 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 and booming. So I, I started, you know, in, in a lab when I was 18 years old in an organic chemistry lab working on metathesis reactions. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I was introduced to failing very, very early on in research and, uh, you know, trained on the giant big NMR machines. And, uh, you know, really, I, I did enjoy it in the beginning until, uh, you know, and this is also probably because I was so young, I, I didn't feel fulfilled, um, you know, by the output and, and like the result, right? If, if you achieve, you know, your, 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 you know, double replacement reaction, all you see is a couple extra peaks on your NMR spectra. So visually, I think at that age, it just wasn't doing it for me. So I shifted to my other uh, uh, field that I was majoring in molecular cellular biology and kind of went, you know, the complete opposite and said, let's study the cytoskeleton, right? And, 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 and structural biology. That's the most beautiful, you know, images you're going to see with the active cytoskeleton. Um, and this is kind of where it all changed. I remember exactly because I was I was sitting in the you know waiting for I was actually cloning um, you know hints uh, wait, waiting for a reaction to end and I heard two professors in the department talking uh, um, you know you know at the coffee machine saying oh did you hear Carl Woese is going to teach a course next semester and the other one was like what you know I I can't believe it like I wish I could take it all the students are going to be so lucky and, and and at this time I really didn't know who Carl Woese was I just made a note. Oh, I should try to get into this class. Keep it. It was a graduate level class. I was an undergrad, but you know, when registration comes out, I'm like waiting to click. It's the first class I'm signing up for. It's MCB 430, Evolution of the Microbial World. I get into the class. I'm like shocked. I was like, I can't believe I got in. Um, and then I show up, and the classroom's half full. Mm. Uh, you know, there's there's only about 20 students there, but uh, they were from almost every discipline at the university because all the you know pi said you have to take this class with this person because he's you know a, you know he's he, he's he's just he's just you know uh, um, a leader in genetics so do you know carl Lowe's? have you heard of him? no no so he's the founder of archaea the third kingdom of life and he uh also invented uh, ribosomal rna sequencing is how he founded archaea with comparing on the phylogenies and you know so 
you know, I, I'm in this course. So, you know, there's, there's just grad students from physics, engineering, math, philosophy, economics, uh, psychology, medicine, chemistry. So you know, it's a hodgepodge. And he comes in with his, you know, he's 75 years old at the time and his cardigan, you know, green and red or red, you know, cardigan. And just basically says, he, he tells us the stories about the golden age of genetics with E.O. Wilson and Watson and Crick. You know, he was, he was in the middle of it when it was all happening in the you know fifties and sixties and seventies. Um, and he just opens the floor to us and has us start talking about evolution. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, look, he's not even really teaching, but it was the most amazing thing that I'll still remember to this day. Cause you, you took a topic like evolution and now you're getting opinions from people of all walks of life and all different disciplines. And it really opened my eyes to saying, you know, sometimes when you think and you're thinking in a, in a certain way, like I'm right, I know I'm right. There's no other way to think about this, this, this problem. You know, it, it, there, there's, there's other approaches, right? A philosophy is going to approach a problem different than a molecular geneticist or, or, you know, an engineer. And it showed me the value of diversity, uh, you know, and, and, and getting different opinions. And I still do it, you know, and I use that, you know, in vector builder to this day. Um, but so, you know, I'm a senior now. Um, I took the MCATs on my 21st birthday, not the greatest 21st birthday, um, but, uh, and this is the, you know, the old MCATs that were like eight and a half, nine hours, you know, uh, and, you know, you know, did fine, uh, you know, you know, applied the primaries, was getting for the secondaries. I go to, you know, talk to him after class because I just wanted to, you know, learn more and, and you kind of pick his brain. And in, in not so many words, I, I asked him to be my mentor in my senior year and, and he, somehow accepted like very easily, especially when he found out I was applying to med school. So needless to say, he talked me out of that very quickly. <laughs> um, you know, he asked me, why, why do you want to go to med school? And I said, well, you know, I kind of have a photographic memory. You know, I, I could just memorize all, all the you know literature and, and just easily probably, you know, achieve, you know, a hard, a hard thing. And he, he said, yeah, but there's tens of thousands of people that learn that every year. You know, you're not learning anything new. And he's like, you strike me as someone who, who doesn't go with the grain and, and goes against the curve. And, and, you know, just talking with you, you know, these past, you know, few months, like you, you should, you should rethink that. So, so I did, of course, I listened to him and really, you know, did some soul searching and said, what is the future? And this is again, you know, it's, you know, almost 20 years ago. And I said, the future to me is computers and genetics. Right. The, the human genome was just sequenced, you know, at this time, AOL was was the big thing, you know, instant messenger, um, good old AIM. And, uh, you know, so I was like, OK, computers and genetics, I'm going to I'm going to scrap med school. And, and what's computers and genetics? Bioinformatics. Right. That's essentially what, what I'm describing. But at this time, there wasn't like a ton of bioinformatics programs to choose from. So, but I found one um, and ended up going to, to, to George Washington University for the bioinformatics degree. And and. I mean, I don't want to talk it up too much because at this time, the field was very disconjointed. I would go to the computer science department and take computer science and coding classes. I'd go to the you know medical department, take genetic genomics classes, proteomics classes, this. And then I had to put it together. Ah. There was no help from there. <laughs> and then, you know, your, your committee members are one's a computer scientist, one's like a, a biochemist. One's, so they, they don't know what's going on. You know, it's hard to do this. So, you know, I, I was working, you know, I learned how to code, you know, developing, uh, you know, new algorithms to detect novel non-coding RNAs. Um, but then really quickly realized I didn't have the molecular techniques to validate these in silico predictions. So, you know, what did I do? Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. So I went to go get my PhD and, you know, <laughs> molecular genetics, I, let's keep going. And then uh, that's where I, I, I really, you know, fell in love with epigenetics, uh, even though like that I wasn't in, I was in a structural biology lab again, back, you know, with my beautiful imaging and working on profilins and actin binding proteins. But epigenetics was, was my, was my passion and it was my side project. And I was lucky enough to publish early and get, you know, nice grants and, and funding for it. And as you could imagine, you know, you know, about, you know, 20 years ago or, or 15 years ago, coming in with a, a master's in, you know, bioinformatics, I was, needless to say, every PI in the department wanted me to join their, their lab because <laughs> <laughs> nobody was coding in the labs back then. Um, and, 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 and then during the PhD, I realized like I, I have this entrepreneurial spirit. I want to, I want to run my, I want to start my own company, run my own company. So, but, but, you know, I'm, 
I'm a chemist, molecular biologist, computer scientist, geneticist. I can't have a normal conversation with anybody. <laughs> so I decided to go take some business classes. And, and, and this is where it gets really interesting. So I was down at the University of Georgia and I applied to, you know, go to the MBA program and I get in and a week before classes are supposed to start, they call me and say, you can't come to class because you're on the NIH training grant and no one's ever done a PhD and MBA at the same time before. So we don't know how to bill you. <laughs> and, that and sounds I like was, an internal problem, not your problem. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a you problem, not a me. I, and of course, I, you know, I, I'm in my twenties, right. and I'm like, and I'm a little like taken back. Like I, I'm trying to push the boundaries and do something new, and you're saying I can't start classes because you can't you can't figure out how to build me. So, needless to say, I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll you know buy books. I'll teach myself. You know, this is I guess this is the way. Um, and uh, you know, then about two weeks later, I get another call saying, you know, hey, you know, Christopher, we, we, we actually escalated your issue to the Board of Regents for the state of Georgia. And they, you know, unequivocally said, start going to classes immediately, we'll, we're going to find a way. And I was very grateful. Uh, I did miss like the beginning of the MBA program for anybody who's got an MBA. You know, that's really important because you pick your teams and you get all associated. <laughs> so I had to kind of get added. But, um, but, but I, I went to the MBA, um, uh, you know, like a lot of it, um, you know, you, you can teach yourself, but there were some things our, I remember our negotiations teacher was uh, uh, on the uh, Clinton administration and uh, and, you know, Clinton was when the human genome project came. So like I was, you know, there was always the connections and she probably was my favorite like class because she would just go and walk up to everyone, stare them in the face. And just like comment on how the way that their resting face looks and how it could hurt them or help them in a negotiation. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like those things that you don't get in a book, right? You, 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 you can't read those. And, and, you know, the fact that she was doing it on, on, you know, you know, for the president, like, you know, that, that was probably like something, you know, I, I, I take, um, but, but yeah, so then, uh, you know, I was the first person to get the PhD MBA at the oldest, you know, public university. And I'm very happy because it paved the way for many others in the last 10 years to, to, to follow suit. Actually, somebody who was um, starting the program when I was leaving uh, ended up doing the same thing and following in my footsteps. So, you know, to be a pioneer like that, you know, really made me feel, you know, just 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 good to, to, to again, push the limits and, and, and everything, which you'll hear, you know, throughout this conversation. So, so that's a little bit about me, a little long winded, I know, but, uh, you know, that's who I am. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I mean, I have a feeling that, that people that are somewhat in politics, you know, must sort of gravitate towards MBA programs because we had, um, I think for our MBA market, I think it was marketing class, uh, we had a lobbyist. <laughs> did you do, uh, did you do Pharmacin, the Pharmacin simulation? No. In, in your, so this no. is like, you know, because I, I don't know about you, but like a lot of MBAs, you're just doing the Harvard Business School studies, right? You know, you're, you're just you're just doing the HBS. So it's like, you know, people don't know this, like, you know, oh, I, you know, I got I went to Harvard. And, and another thing for everybody out there, if you are interested in getting your MBA, I, I could tell you one thing. The, the most important thing is the network. That's that's yeah. really why you go now. Now I'm living in Germany right now and I do not use the network whatsoever. <laughs> so I just tell you, if, if you're going to go get an MBA and, and spend the money or, you know, or, or, or so you, you really, you know, pick it, you know, get it in a place that you want to live. So you could utilize that network for jobs and, 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 and networking like, like all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I mean, I constantly am telling people, you know, the one thing that I, that I really wish that we had a stronger version of through my MBA was, um, the entrepreneurship, you know, side of it. Um, and you know, there are certainly other programs that, that have a much better entrepreneurship program than, than, you know, Indiana Wesleyan is where I went. And, um, yeah, so it, there are a lot of other places that would have a stronger, uh, you know, stronger place to get that. So what, what specifically led you to start Vector Builder and, and kind of get things going there? Oh, that's that's actually another great story. So so after all of these degrees, um, you know, I, I kind of ran out of letters to get. So I had to go to the real world. Um, I, I am considering going, you know, getting a you know, law degree, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, but I actually worked for what what is our major our biggest competitor right now? You know, those who, who will not be named. But um, I worked for them for a year. And when I was there, I just 
said every day, I could do this better. Like I, I just, I saw where they were, you know, messing up. They weren't putting the client first. They weren't really, you know, putting the science first and, and, and doing it, you know, with customer service and a smile. And I was like, this, you know, this could be done. Cause I, I mean, I was a cloner. I was, you know, from, from day one of, of my PhD, it was start cloning and, and I got very, very good at it. Um, and, you know, like this was just, you know, something that was, was a part of me. So after leaving them, you know, I, I did the consulting thing, but it's hard to start a consulting company when you have uh, one year of experience. <laughs> so, so that didn't know, you know, so I shifted to like, you know, using my, like, you know, you know, consulting with um, um, kids going to grad school. Mm. But then I realized they don't have any money yet. So they're not the greatest clients to go after. <laughs> but so like, you know, I, I kind of was, you know, just, 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 just trying new businesses out, you know, on my own for, for a few months. And then I came across, um, you know, I, I was actually reached out to, um, you know, a, an ad for a company called Cyogen Biosciences, who's, who, which was run by um, our current CEO, uh, Dr. Bruce Lon, uh, who was a professor at the University of Chicago. So he it was like, you know, can I fly you out to Chicago and we have a chat about this? And my sister was living there. I have family there. I was, I was sure. Why not? You know, I'll come out, I'll, I'll get a pizza, you know, it'll be great. Um, so, so, you know, I come out, uh, you know, uh, you know, show up to meet Bruce, you know, to be interviewed for Cyogen. And before we start, he, he's like, you know, before we start, I want to show you this thing that I kind of have in the back of my mind I, I, I'm working on. And he shows me the, you know, beginning initial code and everything in the, in the, the interface of vector builder. And needless to say, we just, became probably the biggest nerds in Chicago or, or the world. And we just start getting into it. Right. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm fresh out of just doing all this cloning. I'm like, well, what if we did this? What if we had the drop down menu and like, I could code this to do this and then we could do this. And then, you know, just kept going and uh, the, you know, an hour flies by and, you know, Bruce looks at his watch and he's like, Oh, I was supposed to teach a class 10 minutes ago. Oh boy. And, and I was like, well, you know, I live by the Zach Morris rule for some of you older people. And I was like, 10 minutes, the kids are gone. So I was like, let's just, you know, let's, there's no point. He's like, okay, but I have another class in 50 minutes and you know, I got to get to it. Okay. Okay. So again, we go back to vector builder, continually nerd out again, just talking about it in this pizza shop in Hyde park in Chicago, going back and forth. And like, you know, the lunchtime's over, we're sitting at this table for hours. The servers don't know what's going on. And another hour goes by and he misses his second class. Oh no. <laughs> So now he's like, oh, man, I missed the other class. Okay. Keep in mind, we have not talked about the interview and the company that I came to the interview for at all yet. So he goes, okay, Chris, I have a third, la I have a lab that's in an hour and a half that like they can't really reschedule. He's like, I need to go there. So we tell our servers, we set timers. We're not going to miss this one. So I was like, okay, let's just finish up what we're talking. Then let's do the interview that we, you know, I came here for. Needless to say, that hour and a half just flew by. We did get notified by our server. He did get to the lab on time, but we did not talk one sentence that I came in there to do. And that was talk about the, the, you know, the position for the other company. So he's like, you know, can, can you meet me tomorrow on Saturday for lunch? You know, of course, you know, we get there, we made a promise to ourselves. We're not going to talk about vector builder <laughs> and we're going to just, you know, we're going to work on what it is. So, you know, obviously needless to say, we just hit it off, you know, just we're, we're very complimentary. We, we, we really got the way our minds thought and, 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 you know, I, I took the position, you know, came back to Chicago to work right, you know, right next to him uh, for six months. And then, you know, it was, we both had this, you know, global, you know, this drive to take over, you know, you know, you know globally, not just in America. And, and that's, that's something, you know, deep in, in down in my heart, because uh, I, I believe in like access of technologies to all countries and everybody, because, you know, who, who, you know, we don't know who's, you know, in the middle of, you know, Kenya that is got the next big breakthrough right. or, you know, who's in South Africa, that's, that, that's really, you know, you know, about to crack the histone code. And just because they're not in one of these, you know, the U S the UK or, you know, Germany or, you know, Japan, what, you know, I wanted to, you know, just be able to give it to everybody. So, you know, we, 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 we you know, I, I joined, I joined a team, work with Bruce. Um, and you know, you know, six months later, I moved to Germany. I up my life six six bags and a and my uh, golf clubs, and just you know, get on and go. So I you know arrive. I opened the Gambia, which you know we don't have enough time to talk about that because that's you know opening a a, a game by Gambia in Germany. Um, you know, re, you know, reach out to me if you guys ever want help because 
you know, if you're not German, it is a very catch 22 process. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the bureaucracy here is, is, is quite unique. Um, and, and, you know, so I'm with Syogen, right. And vector builder is, is, you know, kind of like the daughter company. It's this little thing that we're promoting while I'm traveling around Europe, the UK, and, and really the rest of the world, giving seminars about that, you know, about, you know, Syogen, but we would then focus on vector builder at the end. And, you know, my heart was in vector builder. So it's slowly, was taking over more and more of the presentation. The people were more interested in Vector Builder because it was so innovative and new. And in 2018, we had a decision to make because Vector Builder was growing, you know, so fast it was about to be bigger than our parent company. And it was an easy decision for me. Bruce and I split. We left and we went to uh, Vector Builder. And then in you know 2019 it started. Uh, and then 2020, when the pandemic hit, I was actually in China in January 2020. Uh, when everything was going on and what really i think got us you know to the next level was multiple things but we didn't know what we were doing when the first wave hit but we were essentially bubbling and we bubbled very well during that first wave and we were able to get our production facility which is in guangzhou back to um, 100 percent capacity by the end of march and that's when the wave was coming out west to hit europe in the US and soon the lab shut down, you couldn't go in and we were running, you know, full operation. You know, it also helps that we were the first um, company to commercialize and pseudotype um, the um, coronavirus S protein to allow like BSL-2 labs to do research on it, not just BSL-3s. And this was a huge thing now. I mean, I was bald before then, but the customs <laughs> of shipping coronavirus, pseudo type yeah. coronavirus in 2020, oof, that was not easy. Let's put it that way, because the customs agents don't know what a pseudo type virus means. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, then, uh, you know, 2020 really put us on there. We keep pushing for innovations. And then over the last you know few years, just continue to expand and expand and expand. And, you know, with our Series C funding, um, you know, last year and. Um, and yeah, uh, I quickly, I was already running all the European operations, then took over the American operations and then took over, you know, uh, you know, in Australia, Israel and Korea as well. So we just really just, you know, I kind of, I, it, it's a little anticlimactic cause I was already, you know, we were so small when you start it, you're already the top. So it's not like my title <laughs> sure. rose, right. you know, and, and I'm not a title person anyways, but <clears throat> my, my, my colleagues all know this, you know, I, sometimes I'm even when I hire someone, I said, pick a title, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want to be called? Because like, I don't care as long as you get your work done. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I, you know, got uh, how, how Bruce and I's journey started with the, um, you know, Vector Builder and, and brought us to where we are today as a global leader. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the what is it, rising tides raise all boats is, you know, kind of the, the, what happens inside of a small organization. It's one of those things where the, the bottom continues to kind of, you know, get, get raised up a little bit, but yet the, the top is still relatively the same with a lot of chaos that, uh, that you have to, to deal with. Well, we had like, you know, obviously just like any company you have that. And, and for us, it was last year we had that, you know, when you achieve and build something, especially as international and global as we did, we had, you know, we had some of our top people poached, obviously, right? We're going to offer you, what are you making now? We'll double it, like legitimately double it, triple it to get you a way to come do this, you know, you know, for, for another company. So we did lose some at the top um, last year. And instead of, you know, you know, the smart move would be to hire, you know, experts in the field to, to replace those people. But I really wanted to, you know, again, take a new approach and, 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 and we are very like young, you know, uh, we, you know, very young. I, I love to get people straight out of PhDs and postdocs because they're just so malleable and they're so, you know, they're so hungry and they, and they don't, you know, you know, want to, basically like do things like everybody else does. They'll follow, you know, they'll drink our Kool-Aid and, and do something different and quirky. So, you know, that, that's, the, you know, that's kind of the, you know, you know, the, the, the crux of how, 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 you know, that came about um, and how we rose to it. Yeah. So tell me about Vector Builder. What specifically do you offer? Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention as well that I noticed on your website is that um, it's something that, th that you have availability on scientist.com as well. Uh, your products are available there. So uh, yeah, why don't, why don't you talk about uh, the, the products? Just to plug some other platforms, scientist.com, science exchange, Zagino, 
uh, and, and I know I'm forgetting some, I'm sorry. It's like, you know, the Academy <laughs> Award speech, like, uh, those are you, I forgot. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we are, um, what, what we do, and, and again, not enough time, you know, please, please, everyone go to VectorBuilder.com. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it was built as a resource for academics, right? Bruce and I were academics. We still are academics. And this is the beauty is like, you know, um, just, we, 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 we haven't sold out to that corporate culture yet. Um, but, but, but who Vector Builder is, is we are gene delivery experts. Um, so, you know, we are the world's largest provider of custom vi like vectors, uh, both viral and non-viral for gene delivery. And now we have clients in over 90 countries, which I think is the most, um, you know, over 90 countries, you know, uh, and, and the best way to like, kind of, you know, describe us to like, you know, your whole audience, whether you're scientific or not, uh, is we are the biggest Lego store in the world. But instead of Lego blocks, we have little blocks of DNA encoding countless numbers of promoters, ORFs, tags, markers, and so on. And we put them together. You know, we're not a synthesis company like everybody else. We are, you know, brute force. We'll use Gibson assembly. We use gateway cloning. We'll use restriction cloning. We will try everything possible to get this together because that is the future to us because, you know, everyone's synthesis, synthesis, let's do this. But what about those hard regions? Mm -hmm. And what about those places you can't, you know, you can't, those, those repetitive sequences and this, you can't synthesize those. You can't synthesize a, a 300, you know, like, you know, nuclear, uh, poly A or something like that. So you have to use these old, old school, you know, sometimes and, and, and more, you know, building methods to, 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 to get there. And, and we will try every which way because our team is, is, is very proud, you know, of, 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 of success and, and achieving it. And, you know, we have, we are known in, in the field as, you know, if you go to those synthesis companies and it doesn't work, then, you know, go to Vector Builder. You know, like, like we, we do the hard projects, like, you know, the really complex ones that can't be done, you know, from other people. And what are, explain to me the types of people that normally come to Vector Builder. Oh, that's the beauty. It's everybody. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, like I, I was going to say, like, you know, how, you know, some people describe us as a CRO, right? A contract research organization. We now, you know, with our new uh, investment in our new GMP facilities, we're now a GMP manufacturer. We have, you know, several things in, with our IND submissions with the FDA, you know, so we are getting into that CDMO uh, space. But I think like the better way to call us is CMBs. I'm just coming up with this. So yeah, <laughs> yes, contract molecular biologists. Okay. It's like, we're, we're basically like a virtual, like we're a molecular biologist at your bench and it's for everybody in the world that could use us. Even if you have two, if you have $150 in funding, if you have a hundred, you know, $50 million in funding, you know, it goes from there. So, so, you know, we started primarily with a lot of academic clients as, as most companies like us would. Um, and then, you know, a few years ago, we really got into industry and big pharma. And, you know, now we have just, if you name a university, you know, somebody is using Vector Builder, you know, in it. And, and it really comes to, to, you know, to our platform, which, which, which I, which I want to get into, but going back to that CMB thing, I, I, I want to do a little bit of a spoiler alert here because uh, we just had some amazing news where like, um, you know, you could call us a CMB, but, but I like to think of us more like a, maybe a, a unicorn CMB or a very unique CMB since we just received our unicorn valuation um, and uh, we are on Crunchbase and, you know, are one of the first, you know, you know, unicorn companies who are doing this contract molecular biology. So, um, you know, this will be coming out next week in a press release and, you know, kudos to everybody here at the Vector Builder team listening, um, you know, to get us, you know, to where that is. But, um, but yeah, back to the platform. The platform is everything. So again, everything I'm talking about is free to use. It's free to, you know, get help on your designs. We will, you know, we have the best design, you know, team in, in the world uh, who have done, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, you know, designed hundreds of thousands of vectors and you could pick our brains for free. There's no nice. cost. So yeah. it's, you know, like it really is just trying to get, again, like it's, it, it's putting the science first uh, and, and putting, you know, the, the, the clients first. So, you know, really the, 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 this GUI or, or graphical user interface is just, it's unmatched. You know, there's, you know, there's the, the software versions you could pay for, the licensing, the free ones. This is better than all of them with more features, more custom ability, but it also has that add to your shopping cart and order button like Amazon. So it's kind of a hybrid, you know, you know, ordering platform as well as, a you know, you know, kind of a educational tool. 
And the best part, Don, is, you know, and another thing that, that we haven't really announced publicly yet is we actually are about to launch our first software-based version. So we, right now we're a web-based version. We're going to do a software-based version. It's, it's, it's going to be so far ahead of all the other software-based versions, you know, like Snapchain, Vector MTI, Ape, and so forth. It, it, it's going to blow, it's going to blow everyone out of the water and it's going to be called Vector B. Um, and, you know, stay tuned for more in the next couple of months. The only thing that Bruce and I need to figure out and we're kind of fighting it is, are we going to give it away for free <laughs> or are we going to, you know, like we've done in our other thing, but you know, now that we have a lot of investors, I have to think about them too. Um, so, so, so stay tuned, but, but I can promise you that if you are a vector builder or client and you're ordering from us, you will get access to it for free. We know that. Excellent. Sure. So, well, and, and it's actually funny. Our office manager is a, a an apiarist. And she has her own beehives here in, in Germany. Uh, so so we, a lot of fun playing off the Vector B name. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Whenever, uh, whenever you were, whenever you were talking about kind of that, that evolution and uh, the press release announcements here, um, I don't think we've ever had anybody do that, you know, so announce something ahead of a press release on, on the podcast. So thank you for that. And, uh, Oh, there's, there's more to come. Don't worry. I got a couple more, I think. I mean, like, this is, this is the whole point to me, like, you know, and I want you to invite me back. Right. I want to be, you know, like, hopefully I'm become a regular client, um, uh, or regular guest. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd love to have you back. I mean, one of the things I try and encourage people to, to, to do is to come back whenever you have additional news. So more than happy to have you have you come back and uh, share with the audience a little bit more as well. Yeah, so I, I really do want to get like through like, you know, what 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 we do differently. And, and, and like I said, it's, it's treating researchers like collaborators. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we first started, I would go to universities and join their lab meetings. No joke. So actually, uh, one of our professors, uh, a professor, uh, I won't I won't name his name, at uh, UCL in London, offered when I first was moving out, I was like, I got to pick, am I going to go to the UK or Germany? You know, those are the two, because, because, you know, I, I kind of, my, my, you know, my dad spoke German. I, I my, my, my family did, I, I, I you know, took it in, in, in high school, thought my German was good enough, but not, not, not quite. It's getting better. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it was, was between the UK and, and Germany. And he was like, oh yeah, we'll put you in a, like my postdoc just left. You can set up shop here. Like, we'll just, won't tell the university. And I was like, no, 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 thank you. But this is how it is. It's this, you know, they, they would constantly ask, oh, Chris, you made this great, you know, contribution, you know, uh, would you like to be an author? And I was like, no, 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 it's a conflict of interest. Like, I just want to be here to help. And, you know, I, I'm welcome anytime. Like, you know, I, you know and then it's the, sometimes I go in person, I would, you know, then it was more virtual lab meetings. And unfortunately, I don't really have the time for that anymore. But but if anyone's listening and, 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 and would, you know, like me to to attend the lab meeting, um, we'll <laughs> Happy see. To do we'll it. see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Happy to do it. Yeah. But, yeah, um, but Don, we, really, we put the science first. And it's, yeah. it's and sorry to cut you off. It just it's so hard to explain this because my philosophy is if we just focus on the science, mm. the business is going to grow yeah. because that's that, you know, in our field, that's what it is. It's not about who looks the best and who has the flashiest booth. And, and we won't guys, maybe next year, but right now I, I, I like to have people we are that humble company that's in the corner. That's, you know, growing a lot faster than, you know, actually faster than these big pavilion companies. But instead of investing 50 grand into having one of these pavilions, I'd rather, you know, put that into our R and D. I rather, you know, give that back to my team and have a huge, great team party with, you know, open bar, top shelf. Right. So, you know, keep them happy. Um, so, you know, like, yeah, we just, you know, and my investors probably aren't going to be happy to hear that, but, <laughs> but my client, my clients will, and, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, with them because, because again, they're, they're, they're first. And so that'll, that'll you know, help your profit yeah. grow as well, which will then make your investors yeah. happy as well. So it's all a cycle and all of it, but yeah, really everybody go check out the website, please. You know, we got our finger on the pulse with all gene delivery methods, uh, you know, and, and we also have a new Vector Builder Academy, you know, again, free to use where you can actually get like you take tutorial courses and learn more about these these methods for free. Excellent. What's so, the greatest leadership advice that you've ever received? Ooh. Trust your gut. Probably. Because realistically, that first thing, that first idea that comes to your head is more often than not what you're going to come back to because i'm an overthinker i'm an overanalyzer in every aspect of my life and sometimes you just got to trust your guy especially now in the coo role for a global company 
I'm making decisions, you know, countless decisions every day. So I, I've, I, I've learned to just, you know, initial whatever pops in, trust it and go with it. I learned that taking exams. So I, I'll, I'll never forget the people that would go back and change answers nine times out of oh, 10 no. would, would take it from the correct answer to a wrong answer almost every mm -hmm. time. And yep. so I just, you, you know, I, after an exam, I would never, I would never talk about my results. I would never talk about what, how I answered questions in the test. And then secondly, I would never, I would never change an answer just for that same reason. <laughs> Cause yeah. my gut, my gut nine times out of 10, you know, I, my head had thought it through. My gut was saying, you know, Hey, you know, look, you might want to think about changing this and I, I'm going, Nope, <laughs> I got to get out of here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. it, it, it's tough because, you know, with the, with the, you know, with, with the photographic memory, like it really, you know, has, has been a hamper sometimes, uh, you know, especially when taking exams. I, when I leave an exam, I know exactly what I scored mm -hmm. <laughs> more often than not, you know, within one or two questions, like the one or two I guessed on, but the rest I'm like, I know what I got. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's tough when you, you know, you, 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 these, you know, especially these, you know, crazy orgo exams that were like, you know, I remember the first one, I got a 51 and I was like, Oh my God, I got a 51. They're like, you were the second highest out of 700 people. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you know, and then, and that's why he was like, do you want to do research in my lab? And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there are three questions that I like to ask every guest. What inspires you? Culture. Say it one more time. Culture. Sorry. Yeah. Culture. Uh, culture is probably what, you know, you, you know, keeps me going, um, you know, you know, with Vector Builder and, and, and with Bruce, he's given me an opportunity to see the world and bring Vector Builder to so many different countries uh, and make it accessible, you know, to, to the extent of law, you know, obviously, like, you know, I actually gave seminars in uh, Reykjavik in Iceland and in Cape Town last year, just to show the the sheer, you know, we got we got north and south covered um, all the way down. Uh, but, you know, you know, unfortunately, South Africa, we can't import recombinant viruses to, but only plasmids. But, you know, uh, yeah, I would say culture is what inspires me to and bringing that, you know, access of our, you know, innovative products and services to to the world. Absolutely. What concerns you? Culture. Uh, actually, <laughs> say, same answer uh, because of uh, the geopolitical landscape mm. is, is, is really frightening to scientists um you know uh, like their agendas don't typically align with the betterment of humanity and, and and please you know everyone can speak i am not religious i am not political in any means i know nothing that's going on in current events you know with this whole submarine thing i someone was telling me about no idea no idea what happened still don't really know you know what happened so so I, i'm i'm very focused in, in 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 my little you know kind of i guess scientific bubble and and i just want to push it i just i want i want everyone to understand the importance of genetics the field's only 100 years old don like you, you know let's 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 get it let's let's really take this it's not like physics or chemistry has been around you know and, and with technology we could do so many things and there's you still know, so much so, still so much more to learn i feel like yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Last question, what excites you? Now, if you say culture again, I'm going to be surprised. <laughs> culture. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I, I did watch some of your podcasts, and I know you ask everybody these, so I, I tried to come up with a word, uh, something that would, would, would get all three. But but I'll expand, obviously, more than that. Um, and, and, and this kind of ties into the, the concerns me, like, you know, the you know, the, the insurance companies and this, and that, that's why personalized medicine hasn't taken off, which is such a valuable thing we could do. You know, DNA and genomic data should not be like, you know, capitalized by governments. They shouldn't be fighting over it. It should be used by everyone, free access to find those next cures, to solve, you know, cure diseases. If we did that and, you know, all like, you know, the people, you know, get over the, you know, no, 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 I've patented that nobody else could use. Well, what do you mean no one else could use it? Like, what if somebody else is going to find the next discovery? Like everything will work out in the end, I think like everyone, you know, but I believe in this golden rule, right? Treat others as you want to be treated. So, but, but, you know, again, I told you there's some more spoilers. So, so I'll give it to you. Um, and what really excites me is also our R and D. 
we, unlike, you know, even for the size of our company, I think we have close to 30 R and D projects going on right now. Um, you know, one of them, which isn't a yeah, spoiler is our AAV super bank, which, um, we announced last year, and this is going to be using a uh, capsid evolution to develop, you know, novel, uh, capsids for different tissue to, uh, specificity. It's going to have all of the biodistribution data. So then people could come to this database and really select the right vehicle to deliver their gene exactly to the you know cell type they want under certain conditions and this is something that's just it, it, it's not out there and it just you, you could imagine how much that could really you know push the limits we're also working on uh what we're calling mini vec which is like a mini circle but it's a back uh bacterial backbone free plasmid and this is like the patents in there right now uh, you know, we obviously have, you know, tons of like, you know, other, other things going on, uh, new systems, uh, like the, we're using rabies virus, Sendai virus, uh, dengue virus. I know these, you know, tend to make alarms go, all of these are pseudotype safe. They're again, we're gene delivery experts. These are just different vehicles, you know, transportation things that are going to be used to take, you know, your gene of interest into and express it, you know, at the right cells at the right time you know, right tissues to make it as, 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 you know, as clear as possible. But then the last is, you know, probably our biggest thing, and it's a huge sexy topic right now is our antibody conjugated uh, lipo nanoparticles with the mRNA. And this is going to enable, you know, specific cell type targeting. And, you know, we're, we're working on even things in this realm, like we're trying to right now develop a new three prime UTR that enables rapid degradation of the mRNA only in the liver because you know there's all these problems with liver toxicity when you're using these therapies so we're trying to really actually use and to you know develop you know different components that will lower immunogenicity so it allows us to to you know get in you know progress through the clinical trials right i mean you could go through the stats right you know everyone gets to one but to get to two you know, and, and, and you know, to, to, so we, we want to make it so that we have all of these resources for everybody to get as specific to ask those questions, because Don, a vector, it's it's just a complex reagent nowadays. You know, 20 years ago, you could publish a paper, you know, building a vector. Um, but, you know, maybe even 10 years ago, I remember I, I was going to do a video journal paper, one of these like where they videotape you for the journal to show the new technique. But you can't publish a paper in any journal now building a vector. It's just a it's just a reagent. So we always say, like, you know, don't spend your time building reagents. Like, let us do it because it actually is very hard to do. And it can be very time consuming and very costly. You know, you sit back and you design the experiments and trust us that you're going to get exactly what you want to this, you know, you know, to the exact sequence and then to put in and plug in and work on those downstream experiments and make those discoveries. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for coming to the Life Science Success Podcast. I greatly appreciate you being here and telling us, you know, everything about Vector Builder. It definitely, uh, I agree with you in terms of the excitement around a lot of the things that you guys are working on. It's uh, it's very exciting and also great to hear how collaborative your organization is. And so thanks a lot for being here. Thank you so much. And the time just flew by because I feel like we got like, I mean, if you go to our website, you guys will understand why I touched on probably about 1% of what we have on our website. That's why I can't get into everything we offer. But everybody, vectorbuilder.com, check it out, reach out to us, uh, you know, and you know, we will be in a city near you. I promise go to our website. We have like hundreds of conferences all over the world. We're signed up for the second half of the year. So yeah, thanks for having me, Don. It's been great. And hopefully, you know, well, you know, I'll see you again soon. Perfect. Yeah, thanks a lot.